Time to Flooring Models Q&A Tuesday. Here we are on the, what, 12th of April 2016. Now, uh, today I've got loads going on. I've been working with paint. Okay, this is wet. And when we say wet, I mean really wet. I only sprayed it literally just before coming on air. So I'm all ready for the final reveal to undo it all and all the rest of it. One thing I have learned though doing it is if I'm honest, 3M tape, the blue stuff, which is like quarter of the price, I think, of the Tamiya's Bendy tape, is better. I've had better results with it. It seems to peel off better. The Tamiya one kind of to be quite teary as you're taking it off, thinking, oh God, wait for it. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't peel anything. But the 3M stuff's very smooth, very nice. Uh, and doing curves and complex curves, this will bend tighter than the uh, Tamiya stuff. Okay, so, you know, obviously there's a full thing about all this tape and everything else on with that particular video build, but generally I have to say I'm preferring the 3M stuff to the Tamiya stuff. So it's just that thing. If you've got it, like I have, you might as well just use it up on sort of gentle curves, things like that. But if you're doing something a little bit tighter, then I prefer the 3M stuff. It just seems to get in there really, really nicely. It's been going great, I must admit. I've put on three coats of paint this morning. Uh, so it had the very light blue, the sort of medium blue for the body, and then obviously we've just done the dark blue on the top. Absolutely fantastic. Then the idea is peel this all off because we're going to have steps between the different colours. We're going to polish it again. So I've been going in there with the old buffers uh, and polish it up. So that top blue on there, the dark one, is the only pure gloss we've used. All the others have been mattes that we've polished up ourselves and all the rest of it. Uh, right, so today's is Q&A day, so we're going to be getting on with that one, just making sure we're all streaming. Um, this isn't going out live, it's recording it live, which is a weird way of doing it, but it's not recording it anywhere apart from direct to YouTube, and then it, it does it. So sometimes we say it's live, it's recorded live, um, but it's not streaming live. Uh, that way we can just do a little bit more control over it and things like that. Generally, we got a little bit confused with the questions because I was off for two weeks. We had a big backlog. So what we did last week, if you remember, when I had all the guys here, we did it in reverse order, okay? Now, I know we missed a couple of questions in there, but it was very few. Uh, so now we're gonna be going the right way. So it's from post 230 onwards in the Q&A section for Phil. Then what I'm going to do is, um, later on in the week, I'm gonna delete and get rid of a load of them, uh, or I'll make a new section, okay? So you can actually, it keeps it all more precise and uh, and concise so it's easier to find your answers to the particular videos and things like that so we're going to start obviously categorizing them and doing all the bits and pieces which is something i've got to get around to doing uh, and sort out but it's, uh, it's one of those jobs that just it's time consuming getting around to doing it but i will don't forget me and steve will be happy together doing our question thing on saturdays you can post us questions so obviously steve or me uh, every other saturday so it's not this saturday come in it'll be a week on saturday and we'll be back for saturday morning and we'll be working on our helicopters and pushing through with those uh, whilst answering your questions. So you've got a question for me, you've got a question to Steve, and then hopefully we'll sort out the Skype problem, and then you guys can ask your questions and uh, live on air. We can answer you, and then get the next person in, do a bit of modeling, cup of coffee, bacon sandwich, whatever, uh, and we can work our way through it all like that. Anyway, so uh, moving on, uh, we just got to do that one. We did that one. So this is gonna start with Mark Roberts asks, uh, what colors do you do to weather and fade orange? Um, have you heard from Stefan Carlson? Wish him well if you do. To be honest, I haven't heard from Stefan for a while. Well, he's just taking it easy and keeping his head down and enjoying the hobby again. As I say, it's very easy to get burnt out. And I know the guys especially, you know, they feel a little bit of pressure getting up different posts and stuff like that. And I always say to them, don't worry about it, it's fine. I'll do the stressy bit, you guys just enjoy the hobby. But it's very easy to get swept on it. And um, I think that's what happened to Stefan. He got a little bit burnt out. As I say, he wasn't feeling exactly well over Christmas and things like that. But um, you know, hopefully he'll be back with us soon. Uh, fading orange, something we'll be looking at, because obviously me and Steve are doing orange, because we are doing this one. Okay, so that's the helicopter we're working on at the moment. It's one of those strange colors, depending on which way you want to fade it. Do you want to fade the orange? And then obviously what I would do is just put a hint of gray with it or white just to lighten it, okay? But if you want to dirty it, then you might want to go in then with some more sort of grime colors in with, amongst it. So you might want to put in some dark gray, tiny bit of brown just to darken it down, things like that. But it depends on what context you're trying to do it. If you're trying to make it sort of post shade with panel lining and things like that, then maybe you know you want to go in there and maybe add a dash of brown in there, things like that, just to bring it down. Even you know a dash of black and just darken it slightly. But if you're doing for a faded look, then obviously you want to cut it 
with a white, ideally, because then you'll just lighten it. Um, you could, uh, you know, if you start playing around with putting yellows and stuff like that, you're gonna end up changing the color. Um, so it's not really gonna fade it. But yeah, gray, very light gray, so XF19, things like that, or a touch of white, just a dash of white in there, just to fade it and bleach it out. But again, if you're talking orange, it's one of those things, it's like texture. So if you're doing it where it's more like a texture, perhaps make it more flat, that will lighten it than being a gloss, because obviously with a gloss, a little bit lights on this guy, which is wet, so I shouldn't be really be handling it. But because it's a gloss, it's very dark, okay? Yet the colors underneath here are all in sort of, you know, probably satin on the lighter blue, but the tail is very, very flat. Um, so obviously it just makes them look lighter, okay? But when you polish them up, and obviously this will have a gloss coat, things like that, then they're gonna darken up slightly. So you can actually play with different shades of weathering and various things like it through texture as well as its color, okay? So if you flatten it off it will go lighter you know I've done it in the past where you've had things like f-16s and stuff it's got that gunship gray color on the top looking at it you know with a, a gloss because you've been deckling and all the rest of it, it looks very dark as soon as you put the flat coat on it goes you know shades of lighten up of gray you know it looks like a dark gray instead of just being really almost black and things like that so as I said a bit difficult to know which way you think you're doing it okay Krista asks hello gang has anyone tried making their own decals any tips uh, we spoke about this on some live shows many, many months ago. I did, um, when I was doing my commissions for Hornets, we didn't have the decals in the right scale. Sometimes we didn't have them full stop, so I had to go at making my own. Uh, mixed results um, because obviously you can't print white, so you have to use a white decal and then print onto it. Um, the trouble with that is though, if it's clear, then it, it's a bit of a problem because then you have to cut out and then decals tend to shatter and all the rest of it. So what I tended to do was avoid the white back decals and spray those areas on first, decal over the top of it if I was doing things like it because then that's not so bad. Uh, to be honest, I use an inkjet printer uh, micro Industries do a, uh, a, a, a well you can either brush it down or spray it on um, when it acts like a carrier film and a set onto it. But don't forget, you don't have, it's not like it's silkscreen printed. Um, you've got to then cut around the edge, but don't cut too close because otherwise you get the, the, the ink will leach out of it when you put softeners on. So you want to leave a little bit of carrier film around it and all the rest of it. It's not something where you can just print something off, uh, cut it out, and slap it on your model. It's never gonna be that easy. It's one of those things, it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of time uh, to get used to. I am by no means an expert on it. To be honest, what a lot of I used to do is button numbers and things like that. So you just print out the little button number. So on F-18s, it'll say F-18C, and then underneath it'll have the uh, the button number of the aircraft. Uh, and do those, I used to print those out a lot and put those on, uh, and simple stuff that's just in black and white, no problem, or just black, um, and stuff like that. But as soon as you start getting in that realm of doing you know, full color and everything else, it just gets a little bit gritty and all the rest of it. There is printers out there that print white and stuff like that, but then it's all about resolution because silk screen is just done, uh, beautifully done, solid color. As soon as you start doing with like printers, it depends on like the dots per inch and stuff like like that some of them I've seen look really gritty uh, because they're not as good as they could be uh, and then other ones don't look so bad so it depends also how big you know I wouldn't recommend doing a round or on 124 scale on a printer because it's gonna look pretty naff you might as well paint it okay and various things like that okay Richard says hi guys live shows looking much better keep up the good work uh, short question related to photo etch how do you guys I think we actually did this one but I'll, I'll redo it I'm sure we've answered this question uh, photo etch from pinging off the backing whilst handling on your model especially when using white tap worms and schemes I mainly mainly use CA glue for fixing small parts um, sometimes switch into a PVA obviously trying to be careful uh, but I messed up too often any tricks to make life easier I think we spoke about this obviously on the one Steve was actually mentioning like on armor and stuff like that obviously there's a lot of photo etch um, don't push it in just lay it over the top and spray it then you can gently remove it and pull it off but as soon as you start pushing down on photo etch with like tack worms for doing camo and stuff like that it's gonna give you trouble but like he said on there that if you make your tack worm you know, you've got something like this, okay, <clears throat> and you can just warm it up. When you're putting it down onto your model, you know, open it up, get it to the right thing, and then when you come to it and you're putting it down, just lay it over it. That'll be good enough for what you need. Spray your thing, and then when you're coming off, just 
ease it off, okay? But don't get in there and start pushing it down hard because obviously when you come to pull it off, it's gonna come off with it, okay? And it's gonna be quite a, you know, a problem to get it off. I'm a great believer in doing everything together so, you know, with armor especially, get as much on it as possible. But things like handles and those real dodgy things that can come off, as I learned on the Sherman, because I think I'm not too off, um, might be easy to put those afterwards and then just hand paint it, because they're going to be weathered anyway and be chipped and scuffed perhaps. Or you can just do solid color right the way over them, and you can put them in after the actual painting stage, okay? But as I said, it's one of those things, just in case of being careful with it, Putties, we spoke about using clever putty, or what they call it, Panzer putty. Um, just be careful with that as well, because it will sink in. We know this stuff, you know, you put it as a lump and then it will spread, it will bite into it, and then getting it off, it might rip with it. But Steve says, lay it down very gently on it, spray it, then you can just take it off and it won't pull your photo etch with you. Okay, right, uh, Mika says uh hi all just checked out the mr paint website we were talking about mr paint actually on the site um and it says they're acrylic they're not acrylic trust me uh the confusion is i think it may be a translation problem um but um mr paint this is the bottles that john had here on the live show not to be mistaken with the gun stuff um it actually they describe their carrier or the actual thinner that's inside it is self-leveling thinner that's how they recommend the paint they actually say it is and uh, admit it on their website that it is actually uh, mr hobby self-leveling thinner which is a absolutely beautiful thinner. it's one of the best ones out there okay but that is what it is. That's what stinks and all the rest of it. When they say acrylic, they're referring to the pigment because the color pigments are always made from acrylic uh, and that's what it is. So they probably have said in there, acrylic pigments mixed with this, but this is what it is. This is whatever they were, 90 mil bottles of lacquer thinner. So it's definitely not an acrylic. So that's what we're saying by it. Okay. Uh, also about flat coats, Tamiya flat base is ba is great uh, for doing flat coats when mixing with Tamiya's clear and glosses. I use it with great success uh, before their flat coat came to the market. Uh, but if you use too much, it will leave a white dusty finish. Yeah, this is the thing. Flat base, I used to do the old thing where you used to make it up with um, clear. So you'd do a mix and you could get anything from a dead flat finish to a, a very light satin gloss finish with it. The trouble is though, it is easy to overdo it. And when you try and explain it to people, sometimes perhaps they get it slightly wrong and might overdo it and stick in perhaps a little bit too much of a honest and stuff like that. So if you do, you end up with the talcum powder effect and it's far too easy to do it. So that's why I gave up with using it full stop 10, 20, or 15 years ago now. I've still, that flat base I've got there is my original one. I bought one pot of it and never replaced it. Cause then I went on to use other people's glosses, satins and flats and things like that. Now I must admit, I do love XF86, uh, which is Tamiya's flat coat. It's beautiful. You can do it as a satin. If you make it quite a thin, you know, knock it up just a little bit more, probably like 70% thinners. You can do a nice satin finish with that if you're quite close to the model or 50-50 mix good foot, two foot away, light dusty coats, and it will neutralize everything and give you a nice flat finish. And John says, uh, morning Phil and Steve, the other way. <laughs> Any chance you can put the old Apache video on the site? Uh, I like to do the river one. To be honest, it's old and horrible, and it's one of the first ones we did in the early 2000s, and it's not nice. So no, it's not coming back. That said, I said on the live show, I would like to do another Apache. I'd like to do the Hasegawa one. Steve's got one as well, so never say never. We might do a bit of a joint one there. I do like the weathering on them and everything else. Um, obviously, there's a new version of the Apache coming out now, so I imagine a new version of the kit's going to come out or an upgrade perhaps for it. But it'd be really nice to do the Hasegawa one with all the resin goodies and everything else. To be honest, I had that kit for a while, but I've sold it now. Um, but I could easily get another one back in. But I do like the Apache. I do like the look of it. So it may be something that we'll, we'll do in the near future could even be my next sort of helicopter build because i haven't got anything apart from the obviously doing the giant one with steve but for myself i haven't got any helicopters in the pipeline or planned yet so uh, never say never with that one uh gary says hi phil uh when you was talking about the tamiya mosquito on my last post uh i was just to let you know how much i enjoy building it not because I felt you were taking bad about the kit. I know, sorry, I misread that one when I read it back. Uh, really, uh, if it had not been for your review, I would not have had as much fun and enjoyment building it. 
uh, I have here sitting, uh, sorry, have uh, have been sitting here enjoying the live show and watching you guys build your helicopters as I'm working on my Tamiya F4UA1. Another good kit. Any chance you do a review of it? it? There is. I've done it. I've got the kit. I've got both of them down there, the Birdcage one and the normal bubble top, um, well, round top uh, Corsairs down there. Both of them were reviewed and on. It was back in the day when the kit was first released, so we're going back a couple of years now, um, and I did it when I used to sit over there. Uh, with the camera down this end um, for doing the Friday shows when they used to be like an hour long show we used to have kit reviews in there it's one of those so it's not a standalone it was done for part of a show um, but they are around I know we've sort of had a bit of a clear out to get rid of them because obviously live shows and vlogs and everything else there's just hundreds of them now um, but if you do a search on the Flory model site and just put in there Tamiya Corsair something else like that chances are in those ones when we used to do the new show it'd have all the different sections and the times they started so you didn't have to watch the entire thing if you didn't want to um, you can find it in there but both of them were reviewed back in the day when they were released Okay, do, do, do. Tim says, hi Phil, I want to design and print my own decals, there's a theme coming today. Uh, I understand that it's a good decal, for doing good decals you need an Alps printer. Uh, so you can print the white onto the clear carrier film. Do you know uh, anyone who has an Alps printer uh, or offers of service like this? Or is anyone out in the forum can offer this service? Not here that I know of. Uh, one of our members did have one. Uh, didn't have much success with it, if I remember rightly, and sold it. But that's going back many, many years now, five, six years now. Um, there was a guy on Brit Modeler who used to offer the service, um, and he used to be on eBay as well, if I remember rightly. You'd send him the design and everything else like that, and then he would do the artwork for it, print them off for you, and away you go. He did a lot of specialist markings uh, and things like that. So, yeah, there is a guy around and if he's still doing it because obviously we're talking a few years ago now but certainly from the point of view of is it a doable then yes again like I said before if you're gonna run out and buy like an ounce printer so it can print white and all the rest of it you know yes you can and all, all things like that but as I say it's a lot of money time and investment for doing something it may be easier say to find a guy who can do it and print them off it's not to say you can't it's just that you know um, we have the Flory models girl do one Alan brought it to Telford a couple of years ago now when we first did it he printed his own and had the Flory models girl on the wings of the plane and the fuselage and all the rest of it, it looked absolutely fantastic but again it's because it's more you know of how you do it and the scale so as i say it, it's an, an art form i should say okay robert morris asks uh hi phil enjoying your saturday morning show here in texas obviously some of you guys have been watching it post we did it uh please keep the saturday shows going my wife came in and watched Oh, dogs are moving. Uh, my wife came in and watched some of the show, so I now have a market uh, in the market to build a helicopter. She particularly likes the Coast Guard theme. My question is, what is your preferred method uh, for moving the chrome plating on the chrome sprues? I've tried Window X um, and had a good soak in ammonia. Uh, seems to soften the plastic. Best regards, Robert. Again, it's one of those things, um, it's catching it at the right time. If you can leave it in ammonia, it will soften the plastic and all the rest of it. You have to be extremely careful, okay? Um, and then, you know, there's the old one. Um, in the UK, we have something called uh, Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner. That's a good one. But what you want to do is put it into a Ziploc bag. Get one of these bags about this size are handy. Okay, get the sprues, spray it all in it, put it in the bag, spray it again, zip it up, leave it in your sink overnight, come in and then rinse them down and you'll find it'll do the trick there. There's other options, cheap cola, literally cheap cola, soak it in that, it'll lift it as well uh, and all the rest of it. Or your other option is is just to sand it and then you know lightly give it a sand right the way over and reprime it and you'd be good to go it's not that thick it's like a plating for it and all the rest of it sometimes i've seen it and i thought oh i need to strip this off and then I look at it and thinking i'm just going to prime it and i've primed it gone over it and the job's done the trouble you tend to have with it is sprue tabs uh you get sprue tab marks because you've got the plating as well as and you try and sand it in and blend it in um that can give you all types of trouble so then i just end up sanding doing the bits and pieces prime it, paint it, stick it on. I don't even strip it off. Okay, Keith Hall. 
Uh, hi Phil, glad to be better. Uh, just a quick one, getting noises, uh, notices in my email, uh, but questions from members and I have clicked on something I shouldn't. Okay, if you find what it is, okay, their subject matter, all right, I haven't got it set up here. Actually, I might be able to. Um, uh, right, okay, bear with me. You might get a blank screen just for a minute. Okay, hold on, I'm still here, everyone. Let me just try and get that to work. Here we go, let's see. The system works. Okay, so um, like if you wanted to subscribe uh, to, uh, what should we do? Something we're doing here. Bearing in mind this is miles away from me and I can't see. Okay, you wanted to be in here. So say you wanted to go into Phil's Q and A's. Okay, you see down the bottom here, you've got this little guy called subscribe. If you click on it, you get a little red. Okay, if you click on it, it will go off. That will unsubscribe you from it. Okay, so follow the link that has taken you there okay and then just pop to the bottom of the page and go subscribe or unsubscribe that's for the main site uh, for the um, the forum like that if you wanted to do the main site because obviously you can subscribe to a page or something else like that once you log in or actually it's going to be a bit tricky you can't log in uh, but you can subscribe to a page as well you'll have a thing at the top here it's to be honest, I've trimmed this so you don't get all my details showing. But up here, you've got a thing there and uh, it's got subscriptions. If you click on it, it'll give you a drop down with all the pages. You can turn them off as well. So if you find you keep getting annoying ones with me editing the, the various bits on here, you can just pop in and click that and it will get rid of it uh, and do it that way. But that's what it is. Um, there's another one which I'm not quite sure how it works. It's something that the forum, um, the people who obviously host it for us have set this thing up now and it sends you a digest. Not quite sure how that works, how you turn it on or off, but it's something they've implemented and it's just come in uh, the last couple of weeks. So you get a, an email uh, every now and again. It says all oh, topics that you've looked at um, and uh, the links to them and said that, you know, there's 10 replies in there, 20 replies in that one, whatever, and it goes in there. It's a bit weird. I'm not sure if you have to subscribe to it or it just does it automatically, but hey ho. Right, uh, dee, dee, dee. Uh, next up we've got, um, I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Hi Phil, uh, really enjoying the shows uh, and it's really good to see that others are doing, uh, sorry, good to see others doing, it gives me assurance what I'm doing in going down the right path. Okay, I have a question on painting and paints. Uh, I see you have uh, three manufacturers that you default to. Uh, I have two in those range. How do you decide on the paints to go for uh, as I'm a bit uh, disillusioned? Gr easiest thing is, and I say this a lot to people, especially the guys who used to come here for airbrush courses, things like that, is it's what works for you. Okay, don't be swooned by, you know, guys who are saying, oh, this is the best paint ever, everybody should go out and buy it, because the trouble is, everybody does, but everybody's slightly different. Airbrushes work different, different temperatures in the world and various bits and pieces like that. So perhaps you want to be in a situation where, for me, Tamiya works for me no matter what I do to it. I can spray it at maximum air pressure, I can not even thin it, I can thin it down to 90%, it will always just work. Okay, and that's what I love. And to be honest, it's the, the paint I cut my teeth on. It's what I went from being enamels when I switched to acrylics, I went to Tamiya, okay? The, basically, the reason I like Model Air so much is, is that it's ready to go. Straight out of the bottle, you squirt it in, I can put paint down and we're good, you know? And that's the thing with it. The great thing with Model Air as well is purely because they got all the colors I need. Now, if I was into armor, then perhaps I'd use their Panzer range and things like that. But if I was doing some other manufacturer and um, there wasn't the paints in the range, I might have gone elsewhere. My other one, which I don't use tons of, as you can see, and I don't think you can see them up there because it's at the top and goes all the way across, is my guns range, which I absolutely love, especially with this, okay, which is self-leveling lacquer thinners. I still maintain it's one of the best paints out there. The enamel range or lacquer range of their paints as well, which don't have the H in front, it's just the normal colors, uh, Mr. Color ones, they are even better. But the trouble with them is they stink, they take a while to go off. So they're not my run to paint, but I do have them there. The other trouble is in the UK, they're not readily available. They're around and then they disappear. And it's sod's law when you want a particular color or whatever, 
it's not going to be available in the UK, that means you have to get it outside the UK, then it turns into a six quid pot of paint, okay, and all the rest of it, and you've got to wait for it to turn up. So that's why I'm not tons of them I have here if you like I've got a, most of the range but some of those there's gaps in there now and there's not enough paint to complete a build and various things so I really could do with sorting it out but because paints are readily available that's the way to go now if you get on beautifully with something like uh, Rebels Aquacolor or the Humbral stuff and all the rest of it and it works for you then that's what you should stick with okay there may be other paints that come along let's face it last year we had a world and his wife we were releasing paint okay some of them I think were truly awful some some of them I think were just blatant copies of other people's paints. Some of them were excellent, okay? But for me, I'm committed down this road and I don't want to buy another range of paint just for it to look good on display or whatever. So that's why now I sort of curbed it and I'm like, right, I'm not buying anybody else's. Don't get me wrong, I'll still do on tests and I'll still get stuff in. I've got the AK stuff in, didn't like it. All the rest of it um, I got the, some of the mix stuff in didn't like it wouldn't be using it again um, so now we're going to get in the new lacquer well you know acrylic lacquers uh, for the Mr. Paint in those bottles because when I do the SU-33 uh, I'm going to give them a whirl with that and see what the paints are like see if they're as good as everyone says uh, and we make our way through but when I'm telling people, I will say, look, just what works for you. Don't be swooned by what I've got on my rack or what you see other people saying on about. You'll get guys and they're saying, oh, this is the best paint I've ever used and it's amazing. You get a bottle of it and it's crap, okay? So the thing is, don't be swooned by what people say. Stick with your gut, stick with the paint that works well with you, your airbrush, your environment, and everything else like that. Okay, in the past, I've used Humble uh, Enamels. Uh, well, I did in the 70s and 80s. Hey, didn't we all? All right, uh, after a long time uh, of reading, um, I got a lot of Vallejo model air paints as well as a growing range of Tamiya. I did a bit of playing around and found when painting, especially World War II German aircraft, that the colours uh, seemed a bit far off the mark. Then I got into extra acrylics, uh, read the, the best colour match um, to the true colour, but I found the paint a real pain to work with, maybe just me. Um, come to the defense of Vallejo uh, a bit when I did testing uh, for the Buccaneer uh, uh, I want to build and found that the colors are quite close to the match uh, I'm intending to get some of the Mr. Hobby paints as well so I can expand uh, on all three ranges I do like the Tamiya and Vallejo as they're easy to work with uh, am I not uh, uh, sorry I'm not that good with mixing the colors uh, yet so I prefer to have them straight out of the bottle if I can uh, so is there any specific era to suit a specific uh, range best the thing is as I said Vallejo their colors let's face it 10 years ago were a little bit hit and miss some of their color call outs of what they were were miles off nowadays they have gone back and fixed a lot of them so i have to say model air these days um then you go through and it's it's true because recently especially some of their new colors that have come out now people have said well didn't they have that before well yeah but it's a different color but now they've got it right okay so i think basically with all the modern stuff you're fine with the model air tough uh, and away you go the normal um white top um they call them model color ones always seem to be quite good to be honest um they were okay it was just literally the, the model airs were a little bit wayward shall we say um but again tamiya isn't spot on some of their stuff is a bit weird um and guns generally it seems to be spot on i must admit it's very rare you get a guns color that's wrong but again it's one of those things when you're talking down the extra acrylic range i used to have until a couple of years ago all down the bottom here was extra acrylics trouble with it i hate spraying the stuff the stuff as soon as you open the bottle uh, when you open the bottle, first use, it's beautiful stuff. Brilliant. goes down. Absolutely fantastic. Try and use it next day. Rubbish. It just goes off. The paint itself, I think, deteriorates uh, and causes problems. Um, and you get spitting, stopping style, and you need to filter the paint and all the rest of it to get it to go. It doesn't like being stored or anything else. And even though some of their color call outs I had problems with, shall we say. Uh, but that's the thing. Uh, as I say, stick with the colors you like, uh, what sprays well for you, what you get on with, what you trust, and build on that. So when you're spraying, you can just pick it up, put it in your airbrush. You're not really looking how it is, what airbrushes you are, what thinners. You just, because you know that will do uh, and work your way through with it. Okay, Christopher says, I'm just wondering why it says posted and give me a long load of numbers. 
no idea why that is. Uh, right, he says, hi Phil, watching your reviews about metalizer colors, I'm planning on building a small P38 Hasegawa egg plane to try them on. Uh, after some research on different sites, I found that guns are super metallic range um, that you have not made a review about yet. I don't make a review on everything. I can't do everything. Uh, after some uh, research, I found that the super metallics range, uh, sorry, uh, they are not the same as the metal color ones, we know. Uh, and also they're a lot more expensive, £18.50. You've got to be joking for 18 mil. I wouldn't buy it. Uh, and then you've got to have their special thinner. Right, have you heard about them? Yes, I have heard about them. They were mentioned a couple of months ago. Um, apparently they're very nice uh, and they work a treat, but they are still lacquer based uh, and everything that goes with them. They're not like some unicorn one I'm still waiting for, which is an acrylic, which works as well as the AK stuff and stuff like that. At 18 euros 50 for an 18 mil bowl, that is, well, a lot of money. Um, you can buy a lot of other people's for that. I think the AK stuff runs in at about seven quid a bottle. Um, I don't know how many mil are in these. Uh, 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 do, do, do. do you know what? I think they've got it on here. Don't they have to as a legal requirement? Well, mine don't. Do 30 mil. So you go, it's 30 mil in there. It's almost twice as much. Um, no, I haven't. Uh, he also says, uh, do, 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 do. what kind of primer and clear coat uh, is best to use? Um, I would also like to use a, a gloss black layer of paint before applying them. Right, okay, so it depends. I haven't used this stuff, so I don't know it's how it's going to react with a certain type of primer. I'm guessing there's a lacquer base, so you could probably do with a lacquer base paint to go down, because obviously it'll give you the best adhesion uh, and the best possible surface to it. Um, as I say, the uh, Mr. Metal, they do a very nice black primer that goes down. Sorry, the yeah, the Extreme Metals, their one is a very nice black primer. I must admit, I went out and bought a box of them the other week. Uh, of six of them because they work an absolute treat and they go down fantastic and it gives you a great finish and everything else like that. If you want a high end gloss in acrylic, I always say Tamiya X1. I've got a ton of it over there now uh, and everything else because I do believe that's a fantastic one and goes down really, really nicely. As I say, I haven't used it at 18, so with their lacquers and the bits and pieces, you're looking at over sort of 22 euros for to do this um, and it's for 18 mil. Being a lacquer base as well, you can bet your bottom dollar it will go eat through it because you go through gallons of the stuff because it's so thin, it sprays very, very quickly. Um, yeah. To be honest, it's one of those things. We've got so many lacquers and chromes and uh, yeah, various finishes out there. I don't think really we need another. I've got everything I need um, and I'm never just going to be chasing the dragon to find that paint that's brilliant because I love the Extreme Metals. I think they're fantastic. If I'm doing anything big, I will use those. I love the acrylics, okay? So the actual ones like this is chrome, probably gonna be a very shiny, shiny silver. Um, but again, work really, really well. Probably use these for hand painting and smaller jobs, all right? But the thing is, I don't think you really need, just because there's a new paint out, I'm not one of these guys who's just gonna rush out because there's something new, okay? I'm more kind to sort of sit back and when it's not working for me, perhaps we'll try something else and try and find a better way. But at that price, that's a lot of money for something, you know, to do that one. Uh, also, I have a suggestion for a video. Could you make a video about different car times, sorry, kinds uh, of tools you use? Uh, I think you surely should have some interesting bits and pieces that the hobby model maker uh, like me never have heard about. Probably not, I'm pretty boring. I tend to have my tools, but yeah, I could do another walk round. Um, I did one a couple of months ago when we were first sorting this out because obviously the drawers behind me are just stacked full of tools now and all the bits and pieces in there. Uh, most of them I never use, to be honest. Um, but I am quite simple, you know. My knife is a disposable clicky out knife. Orange scissors are my sprue cutters and cutters for everything. And the tools you see here are my everyday tools. Again, I'm not one of these guys that go out and have every tool just because they're available. I tend to have what I do and I use and I tend to duplicate on everything that I've got in case I break something thing um, but yeah that's it I know you get some guys and they buy all the tools and all the bits and pieces 
I don't, that's it, that's the weird thing. I have a lot of bits and pieces here and some wacky stuff, like Alex scrapers and stuff like that, I know the guys talk about a lot, but um, I can do another walk around for you though, uh, and take you through the tool cabinets and what's on all my cupboards and the bits and pieces, because people tend to enjoy things like that. Right, so, next page. How are we doing for time? How long we've we been on? I can't even see how long we've been on nowadays. Do, do, do. Right, okay, so, posted two hours ago, we must be catching up. Uh, Bruno asks, uh, Hi Phil, I'm new to your site and on the forum. I'd like to know why members can't uh, comment on portfolios of other members. I think, personal mind, and yes, you're the boss, I know, uh, that it would be nice that when we discover the work of others, we can comment um, or give your mind. Just my two cents. Keep up the great work, Bruno. Yeah, the way we worked it, when we des designed that particular area, the portfolios, was that you would put up your, you know, hopefully you've done perhaps a build um, thread so everyone can see how you've built it in all the bits and pieces because then people ask you questions or give advice or comment on it as you're building it. Then you can go into the gallery and you chuck your model into the gallery and then again people can comment and all the bits and pieces in there like that and when I do the shows you'll see me and I'll pop on and do them on a Friday and things like that and put them out on the main site and all things. Then you move it into your portfolio. Now the idea with the portfolio is people don't comment because otherwise what happens is you put a couple of pictures of your model, 20 people comment on it, and then you put another couple of pictures of the model. So it's not like a portfolio anymore, it's just people commenting about your models, but they've already commented about them in the gallery and things like that. So the whole idea is that your portfolio is kept nice and clean, so people then can come along and just add on to the end of it, and then you can, people can link and they can go through and everything else like that, and they can see it and see all of your work, or you can link your photos and various things into there, but it stops people commenting and then asking questions and then going Going off track which happens a lot let's face it uh, and before you know it it's you know not even relevant to your models and all the rest of it because you've got other people talking about it and it's destroyed your portfolio just by everyone yapping about other things okay and then like, what happened is we used to have to go around and delete everybody's off of it or you know you'd be in a situation where people don't bother putting in there because it just gets sidetracked and all the rest of it so if you want to comment on somebody's uh, build uh, of photos and various things like it do it at the other stages so either do it during the build or do it in the gallery okay just not in the portfolio because then that way people can just show off their work and all the bits and pieces and just can go down it or keep a reference of exactly where they are and various things or just copy photos across from it uh, and everything else like that so that was the idea with the portfolio just to keep it clean and tight ID um, and you know so that way when you start at the top you can see your photos of your models and it's just photos of your models all the way through okay so you can add text to it some guys put a lot of text with it and they'll put a link as well which is always quite handy so if you are doing it guys if you could so put in exactly what it is you, your normal build things that you do in your gallery one and a link to perhaps your gallery and to the um, other one as well to your build thread and then that way if people do want to comment and you know say what fantastic is or you've made a mistake you need to change that or whatever it is you can just click on it uh, and go to that section so then that way they can ask a question on it and that way portfolios keep nice and tidy everything else can go for your life and uh, have all your comments in it and things like that so there we go right that is about it apart from i'm just going to pop back there's a couple of questions if i can get this to work come on I really must bring the iPad down. Okay, these are just, I think there's four questions we missed for, uh, from Tuesday. And I have just got to find them. Uh, let me just check one. I know it's around this one. Okay. Uh, dee, dee, dee. Right, that was it. So, uh, Paul asks, any suggestions on removing Mr. Metal Color fingerprints? Uh, I've been using the buffer balls and got them all over my unprotected work and he put up a couple of photos. It is a nightmare. To be honest, when I did the Mustang, if you remember, because we buffed it and all the rest of it, it looked great, but it leached for weeks and weeks and weeks. And to be honest, even when we overcoated it, it was still leaching this stuff out and it's not easy. It, it's basically impossible to remove. There's a couple of things you can do. Tape. So use your masking tape, put the masking tape, rub it over it, and then pull it off. You'll notice that the thing like the fingerprint will probably come off more. Do that, a couple of passes over it will get rid of it. 
But the thing is, it's an enamel or a lacquer based paint. So if you've got it on an acrylic or something, it's gonna eat into it. So the thing is, when you come across with any type of, you know, anything to get rid of it, it's gonna be a problem. The other thing as well, like a polisher, because it's got no real bite to it, it's not gonna rub through your paint, but it's enough to remove surface. Give it a rub over it with like a polisher, then a damp cloth just to wipe the dust off and take the metallic with it. Unfortunately, that is the thing with it. And I know what you've done. You've done those little guardrails running around the side, put your thumb on it to hold them model then you've repositioned and you've ended up putting it elsewhere it is that that is the drawback with using it as a bigger item for overall what i tend to use those ones for and i've got them up there the buffable ones is for doing things like engines hoses stuff like that anything that's small and rubbable and then once it's done i either seal it or it's then out of the way so it's not gonna be a touchable area. If it's gonna be something where I'm gonna be grabbing it, for instance, like the airliner, we're gonna use bare metal foil on that one for a change, but normally it would be leading edges of wings and stuff like that. Chances are I wouldn't use the buffable because you know it's gonna go all over that wing and it's gonna make a complete mess. I'd have probably gone in, to be honest, either with the um, Vallejo uh, metals or we would have gone in with the extreme metals and done it that way purely because it's a handleable area it's out it's always going to be handled and everything else and that stuff it's just that present that keeps giving literally it's very hard to stop uh, do, do, do. Nev hi Phil uh, I noticed uh, my tube of AK uh, true metal god I'll tell you what it's getting confusing with all the names isn't it true metal is uh, reach it oh god now they're all falling over <clears throat> which are these ones okay which are it's wax based ones of doing it great for little hand painting and little jobs uh, okay i've noticed my uh, has got some type of funny goo coming out the bottom of the tube it feels uh, under pressure and i don't want to open it in case it squirts everywhere uh, I'm sure I heard you say not long ago you had something similar. Uh, where uh, are you starting to see problems with this product uh, after it's been in storage a while? Right, what it is, and I don't know if mine have. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you can see a little bit of it here. Right, the, the problem I had, if I show you here, this is mine, and you might see it just on the end here. We've got this working today nicely. Uh, come on. Sorry, camera's playing up slightly. You might see this, and if I scrape it, you can see it moving a bit. This is what oozed out, okay, and all the rest of it, and it wasn't nice. To be honest, mine's dry now, but it was really waxy and horrible. That's the clue, it's wax. It's actually uh, inside this tube, which feels, again, like you say, it's under pressure. It's actually bulging, okay? This one isn't. This one feels solid. This one feels like it's about to go pop, okay? I don't think it will. Shall I be the guinea pig today? I can't get the frigging top off. But, this goes everywhere now. Oh, you are right, it is under pressure. <laughs> I've just heard it squirt. Where's my... Um rolls of everything you might see it's coming out the side there i'm just a bit concerned as i'm undoing it you see that's squirting oh my god hey look you can't tell this is live look at that that's under pressure as you can see you can move the camera out just a little bit <laughs> and that's just done that hey look live on the air it's very rare this happens live but look at that that's not me squeezing it at all that's a complete mess now you forget how much this smells like shoe polish that's because it is <laughs> okay so it does make you wonder because also i don't know if you can see but you've got the texture there but this stuff is really wet and watery and yuck and horrible but you can see the lid is there I'm gonna try and put this top back on without a little too late I'm covered in it now you see it just will not give up um, yeah mine's under pressure too then let me just everything's now gonna get covered in silver I'm gonna have a silver airliner later it's all your fault Nev right so is there a problem with this product I think there could be now, the one thing I was just about to say, and I was gonna sound all clever, but this is all irrelevant now. 
is, yeah, this stuff is so messy. It's great for what it does, but yes. So what happened with mine, I have to clear myself up after this. Um, I'm just, I don't want to put it down on anything because it's going to horrendous. Um, let me get rid of it quick. Let's get it down there. Um, right. There is a problem. I was about to say I found that storing them that way helped because originally I had them all in a pot like this. They were sticking up right. And what was happening was it was dribbling out of the bottom. So I assumed that there was a, a, a thing with the wax and coming out. But there we go. There isn't. There's more of it. And I'm looking at another one over there. And I'm sure that one is... Yeah, that one is rock hard as well. I can look at you, you can see it during the, the difference on them, like that one's dented in. That is going to explode when you undo it. So, dear AK, your product. Yes, apart from now I'm covered in this stuff now. God, I hate these products. Especially when you're doing a white and blue airliner. Well, you know, you just don't want this stuff on you uh, and everything else like that. I can't even remember what cleans this stuff off. Let's try a bit of this. If in doubt, that's the trouble with this. That's it, lack of thinners, guaranteed to shift everything. So Ned, answering your question, yes, we have a problem. That is a big problem as well. I'll be pretty niffed because that one over there probably just lost about 10, 20% of its contents just came out with it. And that one over down here, you can probably see it, that is ready to pop as well. That's rock hard that is. And in fact, I'm squeezing it now and that's really hard to dent. Yeah, I think they may have a thing where perhaps it's a, a lifespan or something else like that. I'm not too sure on that one. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, Meng's new airbrush. Uh, have you watched the video? No, I don't know anything about it. Never heard of it. Are they doing airbrushes now, are they? Or is it just, they all come out the same place, I reckon. Um, yes. Uh, have you watched the new one? Sorry, this is Martin. Uh, have you watched the new Meng airbrush? There's a video link to it if you guys want to go and see it. To be honest, I'll have a look after this. Um, I have two questions. In the video clip, the guy, uh, the chap changes the very front end of the airbrush. Do these caps have any different uses? Uh, are all, all the same. Also, he claims it, uh, he has, sorry, it's also, he cleans it using the blowback. Uh, is this just personal preference for you? Uh, lastly, is it just uh, a gimmicky airbrush with Meng on the side of it? To be honest, I'll go and have a look. The other thing, a lot of people do ask about the old blowback cleaning technique. I don't at all. I don't like the idea. I think it's a bad idea because you're putting pressure on the rear seals. As soon as you cover up the front, what you're actually doing is making the airbrush do what it should never do, and that's forcing air back on itself. Okay, normally the air is what causes a vacuum along the needle, which then pulls it along the needle, which then, you know, it gets to the tip of the needle, uh, and then it goes and, you know, gets atomized and blown away. The bit where you bung up the end, you're actually making it go back the other way on itself, and that's something that it shouldn't do, um, and I mentioned it here, doing classes, various things. I always think it's a real no-no, but, I'm probably in the minority. I know people who mix their paint like it and they're like, hold the end and blow it and yeah, I don't know, I don't get that one at all. Um, uh, I will have a look at that video. To be honest, I can't say because I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm sure it's probably Meng just putting their label on something else. Uh, silly question time. Sorry, this is George. Uh, as a complete technophobe, how do I watch the live Q&A guys? Do I need a Skype account uh, or a 10 year old chap to help me out? <laughs> Brilliant. No, uh, normally this is recorded, um, but as I said, it's a bit weird. What it is, it's actually streaming live, if it makes sense, and it's putting it up onto YouTube, but it's not, uh, nobody can watch it yet. And then what happens is it means I don't have to edit it. Normally what happens is that now, and it's up streaming and it's, it's streamed up there, whatever it is, and it's got no drop frames, which is always a good thing, but it's now at five gig has gone up. Normally that five gig, I have to edit, put the titles on at the beginning, all the bits and pieces. If you notice now, it does it all. I can, that's why I have my hand on the mouse clicking, start, stop, 
microphones on or things like that. I do live, but what this enables me to do is instead of it then taking, you know, perhaps five gig, it's gonna take me however long this is to edit, put all the bits and pieces in, cut the camera angles, which I do live and all of those, stops all of that. And also as soon as it goes up to YouTube, it starts to render into full HD. Okay, so you can actually watch it at 1080 um, and all the rest of it. When we upstream live, it's 720, it's a slightly lesser resolution, still crystal clear, but you can. If you wanna watch any of our stuff live, obviously have a look in the forum where you are now, where you're posting this, and you'll see things like me and Steve on Saturday and stuff like that. They're gonna be live, uh, and then obviously for Tuesdays. Some of the vlogs, to be honest, I put them up at live. When I say we're live at five, it is, it's streaming live up there. What happens is though, as soon as I finish it, uh, it then renders it into a better quality again, into um, as best as it can. So sometimes you lose that image quality and it drops a little bit and then it comes back because it's re-rendered it and various things. But generally, just keep an eye on the Today page. Have a look at the Today page and also uh, have a look in the forum and it will come up and it will say, we'll be live at seven o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning or five o'clock, I'll be doing the vlog and that's how it works, okay? and Mark Elliott, which is the last one for today. I've tested the new Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Set uh, Liquid. Uh, this was mentioned on one of the live shows and I have some feedback. Uh, I have tested it on various thicknesses uh, and sized styrene. Uh, and the only real difference I've noticed is that uh, it does exactly the same as the Extra Thin, but the plastic becomes a lot harder faster. Um, you still get uh, finger marks as expected, so still need some care to be taken when using it. It smells different, slightly stronger, but not overly. Uh, the bottle has a light green top instead of the usual dark one. The price I paid from delivery from Hong Kong was £6.75 and I bought it on eBay. So yeah, it's expensive. I have been using it, however, uh, to set things uh, that I need to do quickly, uh, primal paint over. Uh, spending the over uh, sorry sp speeding up the overall model building time also it comes in handy for miniature painting um, and cockpit details and generally anything small uh, that could be at risk of coming away if the plastic is still soft uh, I think it has its place in modeling but at that price it doesn't warrant being used on the main plastic weld Here's a link to the seller I got it, and he's put up the eBay link for that one. Thank you very much, Mark, on that one. That's great. Um, again, it's one of those things. Uh, it's obviously a slightly different way. It's not like, you know, as you say, a lot of you know I just use now, technically, the white top and the green top. The thing for me is the white top is a resin-based, non-weld action one, which is great for doing big things. Um, but I use it in conjunction with the extra thin because what I'll tend to do big things with this, then I'll still run around and weld it up with this one afterwards because it's got the weld action and it's stronger. If it's just making things dry quicker, it has its probably pluses and fours because recent build I had to rip open a part because I put it on wrong but using weld action you still got the option now or later to rip it apart makes a bit of a mess but because it's weld action I, I, I pulled it apart rotated it in 90 and put it back in it was seamless by the end of it give it a wipe over welds all the rough edges in and we're good to go again it sounds like if it was £3.50 a bottle like normal Tamiya's are like this I would probably go out and I'd probably use it. Uh, it sounds like a good product at the end of the day. And as you say, for small little jobs like inside cockpits, things like that, you know, control columns, stuff like that, things that you could do with you know, setting quite quickly, um, then it does sound like a good product. But as you say, at that price again, 6.75 a bottle, that's like the old price we used to pay for this stuff when you couldn't get it in the UK. Um, but yeah, it, I assume it's gonna filter in any way. The distributors will bring it in. As soon as that's in, it'll make its way out to usual sort of suspects on the internet. Uh, and they'll be flogging it probably at £3.50 a bottle or something else like that. So I would just give it a couple of weeks, wait for it to come in, and I'll grab a bottle. Right, that is it for me today. That's us, I think, all up to date. As I said, I'm going to go and clean up that area because it is a mess. It's where I was away. You guys were asking questions. I didn't get a chance to answer everybody. And it just got more and more and more. And before you know it, I had um, 22 pages of questions to get through uh, and all the rest of it. So there we go. That is it. For me, I'm hopefully, if that's dry, going to be unmasking. I'm not going to touch it for obvious reasons because I'm now covered in silver. Um, but yes, be, go and check your... Um, True Metals. I know Steve is a big fan of this stuff, so it'd be interesting to see if his have exploded. But this room doesn't get hot, doesn't get cold. As you know, it's the studio. It's kept at the same temperature all the time. Um, so I can't understand why it's not certainly in direct sunlight. 
because uh, we don't have daylight in here uh, and all the rest of it. But the thing is, it's one of those, I haven't touched it for months and months and months. Um, and then you find it's done that, which is a bit of a shock. So um, was it Nev for that one? Thanks for that one, Nev. <laughs> and all the rest of it. So there we go, that's it from me. Not sure if the Halifax will be up tomorrow, because uh, to be honest, I haven't started on it, because I've been working on that one. So what I might do is put up the next part, which will be all the painting section of the 787. So we'll get that one up with you tomorrow. Uh, and then once that is obviously out of the way, that can have a break. And then I'm going to push on heavily with doing the black work, and then obviously the camo on the Halifax. It's all in prime. It's just sat ready to go in there when that one's out of the way. Uh, but the timing was a bit off on that. They're both going in together. So I'm going to get that one kicked out of the way. No problem. We'll get it polished doing, and probably lacquer is going to take three or four days to go off properly so as that's drying I'm going to be pushing on with the Halifax which is just down there uh, so you can see all about doing it and to be honest the Halifax I'm going to do a couple of things I've never done before uh, one is is working with the black I'm going to try something completely different down on that one and actually I'm going to try something a little bit different doing the top side as well with the camo work um, and we're going to do some things with oils and streaking and smoke effects um, using oils uh, and stuff like that so I don't normally do that so it'd be interesting to see how that one works out as well so there we go. Thank you for joining me today and everything else like that. Thank you for loving the live shows and the way we're doing these different bits and pieces. Still takes a bit for me to work out. Like the thing is like my mouse mat, things like this, it doesn't like that one down there. But um, yeah, it does, we get in there. We'll sort it out and we'll get the live stuff all sorted. And then you guys obviously can come in with us via um, Skype and everything else like that. So that's it from me, everybody. Happy modeling. Take care and I'll catch you all tomorrow.